Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and this is the Warrior Ritual M2i review. Now, I had this thing since December. I've been playing with it. It's been my primary stick, and I've been playing five times a week minimum with this stick. So it has gone through a ton. I should have done this review earlier, but I have a wrist injury, so that's my reason for all my sticks reviews being delayed. I can't really shoot with a bunch of things, and it actually especially hurts with goalie because it's this wrist that all my force is going on, and it's not the greatest. So I wanted to kind of put stuff off, but this has to be reviewed. This is an awesome stick, and it Warrior sent it to me to do a review on, so it is a bit delayed in that sense, so sorry about that, Warrior. But I have gotten a ton of use of that, out of this, and so we're gonna talk about this and go over this stick review it compared to some other things I use performance wise balance everything like that as well as durability because like I said the stick has been used a lot so before we jump into the full review if you want to support the channel so I can make more content and doing more videos because most of the gear I have I have to pay for unlike the stick so if you're buying hockey equipment anyways please check out the links in Canada to hockey supremacy in the US to pure hockey click in those links in the description make and purchase gives me a kickback helps for channel so I can make more content and doing more reviews otherwise check out patreon buy me a coffee everything through any of those links always comes back in the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more videos. So like I mentioned, and I wanna make this very clear, Warrior sent me this stick to do a review of, and the reason I'm wearing this glove is because there are a ton of carbon chips everywhere on it. Like I said, five times a week since November, give or take, is a lot of use on this thing. So we're gonna kinda of dive into it and go overall. I just don't wanna chip my, like get any carbon cuts in there. So we're gonna keep this one down here. This stick is a very interesting stick that Warrior has decided to do. All these companies are now doing like LE sticks for player sticks. True has like the PX line that used to be a limited super light stick. Bauer now has the, well, they had the ADVs forever. Then they went to the Proto V for the goalie one, which I have to say I've never used, so I can't talk about that. And Warrior has done something, I guess like this on player side with a Warrior Phantom. And now they're doing it here with this M2i. But in my opinion, this is actually a very interesting, very, very different take on goalie sticks. And they've done some crazy things on here that I want to straight up call out. So we are gonna go over those things really quickly. I also have a normal M2 Pro right there. So we'll kind of compare that, how like that stick is made compared to this one, because there are some differences there, but we'll cover all the interesting pieces of this. First of all, this is one of the first sticks, I believe for goalie that Warrior has brought the unidirectional carbon for. I might be, I can't remember if the top ones of these, the Pro Pluses have it or not. This has no carbon weave on the top piece right here. And that's what the unidirection stands for. And you can kind of see the carbon through here. That is in replacement of carbon fiber weaves. It's at UD and the weaves are all in one direction. Now, check out my, if you really want to see more about that, check out my videos on their player sticks because they've had it for a while. But that's not the super interesting part. The super, super interesting part is this crazy shaft shape. So it kind of does look just like a rounded shaft and more rounded than normal kind of right here. But it gets really interesting and crazy when you go on the other side and you, you can see all the paint chipping here from posts and me just tapping posts and then eventually just chips out. But you can really see how crazy that shaft shape is here. So it is more rounded on the front side, but you still kind of get that full kind of size. So it's not like it's getting really smaller here. It's still kind of, you have all that puck stoppage power right there. And I did stop a bunch of pucks off this with no issue. But when you go on the other side, you can really see how that thins out and kind of totally changes shape. And when you kind of come over here, you can see that a little bit more. And on this side, you can really see the difference of it and how aggressive this one line is. So you have like right here, it's a thicker and then gets smaller, 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 smaller and gets thicker again. The whole purpose of this is to help with shooting specifically with the glove wrap. So I'll show that off a little bit later when we talk about shooting and kind of how this helps with that or doesn't help with that. But that is one of the interesting features on this stick and makes it very, very unique. And you can see the just like all the paint chipping on here, which isn't really an issue in the grand scheme of things. The other part that is awesome on this stick is their slide grip. And I've been calling this out on Warrior Sticks forever because this is the only grip I'm able to use basically straight out of the box with most gloves without having to scrape it off or anything where my blocker doesn't get stuck and specifically new gloves. When you wear a glove for a long period of time, it will break in a bit and the materials will wear down, which will allow it to slide more. But when you're using newer gear, like I do all the time, unfortunately, uh, that gets stuck on the gripping a lot and you can't get off of it. And specifically mean by that is the materials basically right here. So this is a obviously a Hyperlite two piece. When you try to slide even this stick with this glove because of how this material is here and here, 
it gets stuck. You can see how that thumb is getting stuck. So when you go for a poke check, it doesn't really go anywhere. Now this glove has probably one of the worst designs in order for moving for sliding, but I put it here because this is one of the only ones I actually have issues with specifically on this stick. So I can't really use this glove that much with this stick just because it's annoying and you can see how it gets stuck. But all of my other sticks, I've had to shave off the grip on it in order to actually use most of my gloves. And this one, I have had zero issues with it besides that cr the crazy Bauer 1X or two-piece Hyperlite one. And you can see also this is a textured grip. So these lines, you can actually feel it going all the way up and all the way up here. So the lines itself is what makes the texture pattern. I love that you can feel it all the way up here. It's not quite as awesome as what Warrior originally did on like the V1 Pro, I believe, which had that kind of ridges all the way through, but it's a nice substitute and I love this textured feeling and it feels good on the textured slide part as well. And again, not quite grippy enough that it gets totally stuck, but it does a good enough job and I'm a huge fan of it. It's my favorite grip on goalie sticks and it's basically one of the only ones I actually leave intact. So the thing that this stick doesn't have and you'll notice because it's not labeled anywhere is this Vibex equipped. So this is their vibration dampening system, which I absolutely love on their goalie sticks. This is evidently a material that is used and like construction equipment in Europe and stuff like that to, to help with vibration dampening. And it is on their uh, V2 line. I love that. I wish it was on this one, but I understand why it's not because they're differentiating the two lines. I just really wish that was a feature on this stick as well because it does really help with dampening vibrations. And I still think it managed to do an excellent job in terms of puck feel on the stick. And you can kind of see the textured grip right here that it's gone on the M2i and the M lines in general. This is kind of a texture going up here so you can slide and it's like goes that way where this one doesn't quite have it but it does have the bit of texture in the graphic itself. Now onto the very interesting piece and this is something I haven't seen companies really do before and this whole stick on the paddle has a finish to it and it's like this textured finish. So you can see in the light, you can see those little dots. Now this is kind of a press how like sticks are made, it's like pressed into a mold like this. And this is the result of it. This has been done on blades for a while now, specifically player blades. And it's interesting to see that it goes all the way down into the blade as well, by the way. But it is really interesting to see that this is making it to the goalie market. Now, this does kind of mean that this is totally exposed and it doesn't have like coating over it, really like a clear coat or a finish to give a little bit of durability, also adds weight, but this is a very interesting idea and move by Warrior going in this direction for the paddle. And I am, I love it on my player six because it does help kind of with puck feel, I believe. And it's not as glossy to so get a bit more grip, even if you don't tape it. But it's interesting to see that this make it all the way to the paddle. And it's one of the more interesting pieces on this stick, I believe, from a tech standpoint and kind of a manufacturing process. So interesting to see if this goes anywhere forward. You also see the Minimus Carbon 25. You see it, the Minimus UD up here. The 25 is 25, this weave, obviously, as you can see, or at least it's what they call their 25. And that's what the thicker lines on there are. When you go to a lower end ritual stick, they have the older version, which is like the 12K weave, which you can see right here. So obviously the bigger weave patterns, as in like the bigger squares, is you generally can get lighter materials out of it. So that's kind of the point with that. The other interesting thing about this stick, but it's kind of a carryover from that one, and well, the M1 is, it does have, I can't remember what they call this, but this zone right here in the M1 that's supposed to give this a low kick stick feeling. So we'll talk about shooting kind of later on, but an interesting paddle design and kind of shape with this. And, and Warrior does do something cool with this as well, where the front of the paddle is totally flat on the M design. And you can kind of see it bulge out where your hand grip is, but then it gets flattens out right here all through the paddle. The other side's kind of convex, but this side is totally flat. And we've seen that in like Bauer sticks and stuff like that. But just pointing it out that this part does really flatten out and get really thin throughout it right there. And as a comparison, this stick is the M2 Pro and you can kind of see hopefully a little bit the differences on here where this one is totally flat on the front. This one is kind of convex on both sides and it kind of is rounded on both sides. And when you look up here, you can really see the difference on the thickness of these two. So big difference there. This one's obviously a more traditional style shape. Doesn't really make in my opinion, a huge difference, but just a different construction. So I wanted to show that off. I So I have to talk about sizing on this stick. So as you can see right here, we have a 26 Warrior and a 26 Bauer. I've made posts about this constantly and people don't understand it. So it's kind of annoying, but 
The 26 Warrior is actually basically a 25 Bauer, as you can see right there, and that's how they line up. So this stick is a bit shorter. I've moved down to all 25 sticks going forward, so I want a shorter paddle. I've had issues with my blade basically sticking up. 24 would be a little bit nicer for me, but a 25 is really, uh, it's common to get sticks in that. It's harder to get the top sticks in 24, so we're going with 25s. So you can see the height difference in the paddle right there, and Again, 26, 26, but the Warrior really does play like a 25, so I want to call that out. The other thing I want to talk about, because we're going to get onto height, is total length. So you can see that this bower is actually shorter at the top of the shaft right there. So this Warrior, even though it is a 25, really, uh, it is taller than what the Hyperlite was, but the Hyperlite did have a shorter length overall too. And I think the PX did as well, where the Warrior was a total like normal shaft length. So you could cut off some of that to save some weight, but they didn't and they left it as is. Now on to weight. This is a very light stick. And from my understanding, the lightest stick Warrior has made to date. Weight is always something that I believe people worry too much about. Goalie sticks and player stick is a number you can easily hit. Balance is very important. This, I'll put the number up here, what it was. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but I'll, I weighed it before I taped it and everything before it got really used. This was simply the lightest stick I've ever used in a game. The True PX was lighter. I'm sure the Proto V is lighter. I've never used both of them in a game at all. I've only used this one. So I can't really comment about those compared to this, but the weight and balance on this is absolutely fantastic. I've never like knocked more pucks out of the air, swatted pucks away, and I posted this on Instagram, some clips of that, of just how good this stick was and is for balance and me being able to control everything with it. I absolutely love it and it's kind of annoying and hard for me to go back to these sticks, which are by all means fine, but they weigh so much more compared to this one that it's just like, oh man, I'm losing out that like split second of movement because of how amazing and excellent and light this stick is. Now my last stick before this was a Hyperlite and the Hyperlite didn't feel nearly as nice as it felt great, but it wasn't as light as this. And this one really brings it to that next level and was very, very, very impressive. That also kind of goes with the balance of everything. And this stick just feels so nicely balanced. It really feels like the weight, there's just a slight weight to the bottom of it compared to the top, but very minimal and enough so when you're doing this, it doesn't feel like you have a ballast at the bottom kind of weighing anything where some poorly balanced things are like that, or it doesn't feel like it's too light so that you can kind of feel your heel coming up and stuff like that. It feels very, very well balanced. So I'm a big fan of that as well. If you want to support the channel so I can make more content and doing more videos because most of the gear I have, I have to pay for unlike this stick. So if you're buying hockey equipment anyways, please check out the links in Canada to Hockey Supremacy in the US to Pure Hockey. Click in those links in the description. Make and purchase gives me a kickback, it helps for the channel so I can make more content and doing more reviews. Otherwise, check out Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything through any of those links always comes back in the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more videos. Now, for durability, this is, I'm gonna say fine. Now, people are gonna say, this stick is broken. How can you say the durability is fine? I played again, basically over five times a week as a goalie with this stick since December. And it's now uh, April, middle of April. So that gives it quite a while of, of usage. Like this thing getting hit that much, getting stepped on, which you can see like right there. <laughs> and it happened multiple times. The fact that this thing is still sort of in one piece is pretty impressive for how much abuse and use that these things, are, this thing is specifically taking. And just to prove that how like, kind of dead it is, the blade, I retaped this for playoffs because I wanted to use a stick in the important games and this blade is gone. You can see that crack in there and you can flex it open. So you can see that blade opening, try to get that on camera, this stick is totally gone. It also took a lot of abuse on the sides. And this is where I kind of mentioned that it doesn't have that clear coat. So if we look over here, you can clearly see this part is also basically broken right here. But the interesting part is that like there's, I can flex this and it doesn't break and doesn't move more. So it clearly just took like a puck chip or something here and it cracked it. But the whole actual like structure of this is still totally fine. It just looks really bad. And that you can see some more chipping right there. And when we go to the top, it did take puck marks as you can see through here and up here. And it did get a lot of paint chips from the post as I mentioned earlier, but everything is holding up up there pretty good. And everything is doing a pretty, like it's, it's doing, it's good enough. And I am totally okay with the durability of this. Yes, I would like the stick to last longer, but it's getting hit with pucks going pretty fast. So there's not a whole lot you can do with it. Now, the interesting thing is, I think this might be with the shape of the M2 paddle, because if I look at the M2 Pro I have here, which is 
use less than this V2. This V2 I bought used off someone and this one was even used less than that one. Uh, you actually can look at back here and you can see some pretty significant chipping and almost breaking. I'm trying to get that on camera. You can see right here, kind of cracked right here and chipping just like on that M2. And this stick wasn't used all that much, but it's still fine. It's just the edges are chipping. Now, I, again, I didn't see that type of chipping on my V2 right here, V2 Pro. And maybe that is because the shape just kind of works with it. There is some paint kind of chips right here, but it's not actually the stick chipping and the carbon kind of breaking. It's just paint chips. Whereas my old V1 that I use, it did kind of break there, but that's where the stick, the stick just broke after like two years of use. So this one I'm totally accepting with the durability of this and how long it lasted. Again, goalie sticks are gonna break. If you're using them as much as I have and you're using it as much as I have, that's totally fine. My Hyperlite broke in like third of the usage of this. So this going as long as it did, I'm pretty happy with it and it broke on the blade, which I can still use it. It's just, it's broken. So I do have to replace this. So it is what it is for that. So full disclosure, this blade is so broken and I can feel it being broken and you can hear it being broken. You can hear how that makes like no sound and there's kind of a thud. And if I go like this, it's kind of a thud. It should sound, it should sound like this. And then also like that. So it's totally broken and you can't really judge based upon like how I can shoot and everything because it should shoot like that and it doesn't. So with that said, the thing I noticed really good about this stick is because of the weight of it and how light it is, it was super easy to kind of, well one, to stick handle with and especially with that top grip helping a little bit to make it smaller. So it was great for that, but it was also really good for just little sauces. And I'm not the best puck handler in the world, I'll be the first person to admit that to everyone. But with this stick, it definitely helped. Like I can make quick passes just like that, really easy to people. I was much more accurate with it. And I was playing the puck a lot more consistently. And like, obviously that just comes from practice as well. But this stick really did help with that a lot. And I was pretty, like, I was happy with how I shot with it until it broke, but like everything was consistent. And like, that's one of the biggest things with goalie sticks I find is sometimes I get a good one and it goes down the ice and other times you flood it like that and it doesn't go anywhere. With this, everything I was shooting was pretty like standard and it felt pretty good and consistent and so I was happy with it but it was also like one of the first sticks I could consistently just sauce. And while it's not like a sauce like I play in hot, like as a defenseman where I do it a lot, it was a little chip thing like against the boards where someone's coming from like around the net and they're kind of there so I can just easily go like that off the top of the boards or off the glass super easy and that was a lot like helped with this the stick and how like it's easier to grip and easier to use and everything like that it was super easy it was a little talk over their stick and it was a lot better than what i've used in the past so i was a huge fan of it for that sense now obviously for shooting i can't show examples of this because the stick is broken but here is just a ritual normal stick which doesn't have like it's not that low kick right and to see if you can tell, I really feel like you can't tell the difference between them. They both feel like they shoot pretty similar. So then when I go to the M2, it doesn't really feel like it's kicking any different. So when I'm making the shot and trying to put like weight behind it and flexing it, it doesn't really feel like the stick is actually flexing compared to a stick without that low kick on it. So I don't think that really makes a huge difference, but overall this stick was easily my favorite stick for shooting, puck handling, everything to use it. It's so light, it's so well balanced, and it just, it feels awesome. And it was so easy to just give a little lift and a little flick just to get like a little bit of sauce to help out my teammates a bit. I'm a huge fan of this stick and love it. The idea of the M2i's uh, shaft is, cause this is just a square like with rounded corner shaft. 
when you put a glove on it, you can see there's like gaps everywhere. And all, because of how thick the shaft is, your glove can't really squeeze everywhere. So you, you can still get a decent grip with this glove, especially because it's so like broken and easy, but there are all these gaps and it could be better. So when you get to the M2i, because it's skinnier, when you go to wrap, more of the stick is being held by the actual glove and you have a firmer grip on it and a tighter grip. And it's, um, you have much more like leverage here. And it's e so it does make it easier to shoot and it makes it easier to stick handle and just overall easier to grab. And you can see that in here, just how much more you're able to grab on the actual shaft itself. And this glove is really easy to close and everything. So it's easier to do, but we'll show another glove too. So it doesn't always work the best with all gloves. This is a 590, obviously. And this is, people say is like one of the best shooting gloves. But when you put it on, you can see how like the knot square shape kind of just doesn't fit perfectly in spots. And it kind of even jiggles a bit, right? So you can't get the best grip out of it. And now obviously this glove isn't perfectly worked in, but it still closes pretty good. And I just can't get the best grip of this, but it's very glove specific. And here's like my JRZ and putting that on there is like not great as you can see. So this one isn't that good. And this one definitely just gets in the way of the square one. And when we put it on this, it actually does grip better. It's still not great, but it's better than what the square one was. And this glove is just crazy because it grips like that and it holds everything in place. But as you can see, there's the square one right there. And with this one, it feels really good and it grips so easy and so amazing. But that's a lot of the glove doing the work, but the stick also helps. So the stick definitely works on certain gloves, like that Warrior one, you saw how great it was. And it doesn't work that great on like that 590. This one, it works fantastically as well, but this glove is crazy and stick handles are really good. Overall, the Warrior Ritual M2i is, I think, one of the most interesting goalie sticks I've seen on the market and to come out. I love what they are trying or what they have done with the M line with like adding this piece in the back. And then with this one specifically with the very interesting shaft shape. And I really do hope that this shaft shape continues down the line of Warrior sticks, even though it doesn't totally work with all gloves. It does work overall pretty well, and I really like using it. If I had a choice right now, money no object, buy any stick on the market, this is the stick I would go for. And if I had to replace a stick right now and needed to buy a new one, this is one I'd be looking at. Now, I review sticks, so I always have to try new things, so I wouldn't just go out and buy one. That's why I kind of haven't bought one. I'm kind of waiting for the new things. But this would definitely be my go-to, and I'm very, very happy with it. I loved my time with it. I will still use it for, like, non-games, just because while this blade is broken, I can still use the stick. I just can't shoot with the stick. Yeah, overall, very, very impressed with this. Very excited to see what they do in the future. A uh, huge thank you to Warrior for sending me this to do the review on. Sorry it took so long to everyone for because I know a lot of people ask me about this. So if this video was helpful and you want to see me do more reviews like this, please reach out to Warrior on social media and stuff. Let them know you want to see me review more of the their gear. It would be greatly appreciated because uh, usually I have to buy gear. And this one was thankfully sent to me from Warrior so I could review it. Like I said, my favorite stick I ever use and stuff like this makes me happy where you see companies really trying things and doing different things. And this is a big difference from what it was. And I, I had a lot of people question if this was durable, like the shaft shape and if there was going to be any issues with it. I had zero durability issues with it whatsoever. And it just overall, like it ended up breaking just from massive usage and that's it. So there's no issues whatsoever for me. And I'm very excited about this stick. Not recommend this stick enough. Obviously it's very expensive and that's kind of the way we're going with sticks. And you have to figure out that price is justified for your purchase. Warrior still makes solid sticks and I have no problem whatsoever using the M2 Pro versus like the crazy light M2i. Obviously the M2i is super light and everything, but this is still a solid stick. You just do lose some of that weight benefits that you gain from the crazy light one, as well as that shaft shape. It's still a solid stick. So you have to figure out what kind of lines up for your price point and go from there. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If you want to see me review any specific piece of gear, please let me know in the comments and let companies know like Warrior. So hopefully I can get more gear to do reviews on. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, check out the links in the description to Pure Hockey if you're in the US and Hockey Supremacy if you're in Canada. Clicking those links and making a purchase gives me a kickback, helps support the channel so I can be buying more gear and doing more reviews. Otherwise, check out the links in the description to Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything through those links always comes back into a channel so I can keep buying more gear and doing more reviews. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.